Listen to the radio. Harry and Edna's want to show you heard it from the three bells. What are you, Harry? And what are Edna? And welcome, because it's Harry and Edna on the wireless. What ho? There you go, Duke Ellington and Kirko or Coco. Coco. Depending on what part of America you come from, that does. Or whether you come from up north or not. Now, I have to explain, this is Harry Ned on the wireless. We have an hour and we give you a little insight here into the current UK vintage scene. And this is a, and before me is a very homely vintage scene because you're sewing. I am. <laughs> I, I, I'm well overdue sewing badges onto a scout uniform and badges onto a blanket. So I thought, what better time to do them than in between, you know, while the songs are playing. So you, 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 you sew in time to Duke Ellington. I have been, yeah, and it's been very relaxing. Now, I also have to explain, we have a guest on the show, don't we? We do. We have Norman Bennett. Yes. He of Bus History. Who you met, I believe. Yeah, I should explain. Uh, we were at... Uh, well, I just want to say we. It was actually we. Minnie Harry and I, or, or the artist formerly known as Minnie Harry, because Minnie Harry doesn't want to perform with his dad anymore. Well, he's not so Minnie either, is he? <laughs> <laughs> um, he used to be my son and I... Well, well, he used to be your son, well, still is your he, son. He was my son, and I used to get him to do a bit of occasional DJ. Although he's Minnie Harrying when he did this event for me. Um, we were at... Uh, one of the premier air shows in European air shows called Flying Legends up at IWM Doxford in Cambridgeshire. And we were doing playing the shellac for to entertain the crowds. And near us was a double decker bus, all kitted out inside as if it was a um, a 1940s house. And it goes around schools and so forth. Wow, yeah. So we are going to be talking to Norman because he took me into he gave me a tour around his house stroke bus. And I'll let you into another secret. Mm. The day we, we recorded this and we were performing, it was a scorcher. And in the air raid shelter, to add Atmos, it's air conditioned to make it cold. <gasps> in the air raid shelter? In the air raid shelter How part of the house. That, then? They have a little bit of air conditioning in there to make uh, it feel like it's colder because you've gone into the garden. You see, they, they leave no attention to it. And well, I tell you, I was sweltering. In the bus? In the bus. Wow. It was a fantastic. You wouldn't believe it. It's like a real TARDIS job. But we'll let Norman explain it all, Hmm. because what we really need to listen to is the start of each day with a song, as we do. What ho? You've got to start each day with a song. And I ended my day with a song. Um, We we are going to talk a little bit about Flying Legends, because uh, young Edna didn't go there and you want to find out all about it. So he said, you'll give me a a few questions and so forth. But... Mm. On that song, he said, when I went for his head, he jumped me in tail, and when I went for his tail, he jumped on my head and things like that. And that reminded me of something today, because the day job, I have a little day job now and again, I look after donkeys. Not just just, any old donkeys, special donkeys. I look after after a number of donkeys here on the island, and I look after some of the donkeys. And I was giving them a leg stretch, um, and we were having a little... Trot, and then I thought, no, I wonder no, if I can get him into a, a canter. Yes, as I say, it's a bit faster than a trot. And then we got him up to, and and and, and this particular donkey of, of ours, who, who's a who's a big white fluffy ball, um, got him up to a canter, which was good. We're just running alongside, you know. We, we, um, just so you know, for those of people who are not on the Isle of Wight, will not know that you cannot ride donkeys on the Isle of Wight. It is uh, against the bylaws, I believe. But uh, where I work, we have donkeys, and I was giving him, and then I forgot this donkey runs in a sort of a funny way. He sort of he strikes his legs out, doesn't he, in a, a non-conventional running way, just because that's the way he runs. Bless him. And, and he knocked my leg, mm. and I ended up on the floor. You mean you tripped over a donkey leg? In, essentially, is what you're saying, isn't it? I did. I did. I tripped over a donkey leg, which was um, not a lot of people can say they've done that. No. And was your co-worker laughing? Oh yes. Oh yes. Did she say, "If only I had a camera"? No, no, she was running with another donkey at the time. Mm-hmm. We were giving them both a leg stretch because it's nice to, occasionally for donkeys to be allowed to be donkeys. Anyway, that's what I heard that song and I thought of this, but that and the fact that my leg isn't half throbbing. <laughs> and your arm doesn't want to work because of bruising. Oh, my arm bruising. was so sore. When we got to the stable, I had to put it in the horse trough. And <laughs> sort of was that because you landed on it? Yeah, I did, yes. How did you know this? You weren't even there. No, but I can work out what happened <laughs> from your injuries. <laughs> 
uh, the other day, did we tell, I don't know if we told the dear listener, I fell off my bicycle. And, that was um, quite a while ago. It was a while ago. And, and Minnie Howie, who we talked about at the beginning of the show, he, he do, he'd broken his thumb at school while larking about with his chums. And then he had this big, sp- this big like, splint on his hand. And then I decided to fall off my bike, and we were matching. You had literally the same hand, wasn't it? The yeah. same thumb. You see, it's always fun and games it's here. All, your poor son wanted all the glory for a moment, and he couldn't have it because you eclipsed him by ruining your own thumb. <laughs> Right, this is Harrier and Edna on the wireless. We're going to find out about the home front bus in a moment. And with Norman Bennett, who gave us a tour around there, it's a bus where you can... Um, which, which is, is it an old-fashioned bus? Yes, it's, it, it's, I thought we were going on summer holiday here with Cliff really? Richard. Really? And you had um, all the it, windows blacked like a out. It's like a route master, you know, where you get on the back and all that sort of stuff. And you've got the little cab mm. at the front where Reg Varney would sit if you were on the buses. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was like that. But inside it was all done like a 1940s house. And they do they take it to schools, basically, that and do educational really stuff. It was really cool. And to get us in such a mood, we're actually not going to go to Norman for a moment. We're going to have, play a couple of more tracks. But to get us in that 1940s vibe, we thought we'd play a little bit of Harry Roy. And is it true what they say about Dixie? What ho? There we go. Oh, oh, go, you go first. You go first. I'm so used to talking first. I know, so I'll used to quiet. just taking control. Um, so, Harry, if I didn't know anything about Flying Legends, what what does that mean? Just to give you a quick um, a background, uh, I was fortunate enough to be asked to play some 78 gramophone records to entertain the crowd, because uh, I, I can do conventional DJ, we should all done on a laptop today, where you do that, um, although it is always the the classic tunes from the 30s, 40s and so forth. But my favourite and what I'm most known for is doing it with Shellac, 78 records and the wind-up oh, gramophone. Yeah, as I say, on proper gramophones, isn't it? On proper wind-up gramophones. And I usually take Mini Harry, my son, with me because it takes a lot of effort to keep <laughs> winding that thing up. And anyway... We were asked to do this at Flying Legends, and to answer your question, what is Flying Legends? It is one of the largest air shows in Europe, where they have lots of classic airplanes. It's done by the um, fighter collection at IWM Duxford, who restore Spitfires, Hurricanes, and the like. I guess it's a, a fundraising event, but they have some amazing planes from all over the world. So when you say legends, flying legends, what, what, and you say classic aircraft, what, what is it that, because not everybody will understand what a classic aircraft well, it means. Well, uh, I've only ever been to two, mm-hmm. to be fair, and uh, mm-hmm. hopefully they'll invite me back so we can do some more. But every time we've been, there have been a multiple fly pass by lots and lots of Spitfire aircraft. Well, all at the same time. All at the same time. Very Ooh, iconic. I bet that sounds amazing. And Mustangs. And invariably, we have a B-17 in the UK that flies called Sally B. And invariably, Sally B takes to the air. And we've had all sorts of red arrows have come. Mm-hmm. Whoosh, whoosh, that's good. So and, are they classed as flying legends? I'd think they're a legend, wouldn't you? I would love to have the red jumpsuit that the pilots wear to say, mm. hey, look at me, I'm a flying legend. Do you remember, actually, many years ago, I'm changing the subject completely, going off on a tangent. Before we lived on our beautiful little island here, Mm -hmm. we were over doing an event and the Red Arrows were staying at the same hotel as (laughs) us. Yes, yes, I remember. And we just kept listening into their conversation. He was on the phone and saying, well, I'll be flying over here at this time. (laughs) Blah, blah, blah. So many degrees, blah, blah. Anyway, it sounded massively technical, didn't it? But it was so impressive to listen. I think... He's the dude that'll be flying. He's the dude that'll be flying the plane. That's so exciting. And the kids were so ex- sort of in awe of them, weren't they? Because they were all... No, I think they were too young to appreciate it. No, I think That's Jack good. was, because I think he got and understood that they were the Red Arrow pilots, which was amazing. Yeah, and to think they're just in one of our local hotels who mm. we, we were staying Breakfasting with us. Bref- breakfasting with us. They were enjoying a bit of a fried slice and an egg. Well, I should have. I wonder if they do you reckon they have to watch what they eat and thinking weight wise. Well, you don't think they can squeeze into those little aeroplanes? No, no. I'm just thinking like, <laughs> does it throw out the weight ratio or something like that? Do they have? To, is it all mathematically worked out? I don't know. I, I do know, like uh, it, for the, the boat race, mm. um, when they have the rowers, that's what the, I'm the thinking. The rowers basically cram themselves to as much to get as much weight as possible. They have a big old so fire. Uh, then you've got the coxswain at the back who steers the boat, and he basically starves, or he or she starves himself for about two weeks mm. to be as light as possible. Why 
is that? Because they, they, they're the, way the they, head end of the, the boat. Way, no, they're, they're the back, aren't they? They're okay. Still, and um, I don't know. I just guess it's the way the boat sits in the water to make it the most. So the, so the person who does the steering and does the pull, pull, whatever it is, you know, that tells them to, to row, basically yeah. he has to starve themselves and basically you know, don't weigh of anything. And then you've got the big, heavier participants actually doing the rowing. Do you think, though, as they row, they burn off the energy they've just consumed that morning? Possibly. I don't I mean, know. I just I wondered if it was rowed. like the same with a, a, a red arrow pilot, whether yeah. they're not allowed to eat loads because suddenly the, the weight of their body and the aircraft and, I don't know, some mathematical equation gets taken into account. I, I don't know, because many years ago when I did the corporate life um, and, you have, and, and you get very desk-bound, I, I, I joined a gymnasium. Mm. Uh, one of those sort of stupid ideas one ever had yeah. and I used to row away like mad at this thing and I never ever got anywhere it just stayed in the same spot see that's I, why I think you'd struggled with your, your gymnasium regime because you, you achieve nothing as in like at least you can row from one end of a river to the other not literally yeah. but do you know what I mean you if can I, make if some was, progress if I was powering up half of Milton Keynes I would have been impressed exactly you know or I mean? if you'd arrived at, you know you'd rowed from Bedford to Milton Keynes you would have <laughs> felt like you'd achieved something well they do have a big rowing club in Bedford yeah so they're, I went you should have maybe rowing, maybe yeah. you should have been a part of that oh, I don't Anyway, it knackered no. your knees up, didn't it? So it wasn't. It didn't no, that was running. Too, it was running. Was it running? My knees, and that wasn't doing it in the gymnasium. That was running along the road. And, Proper running. Um, actually, if you go back further, it was um, doing winter sports. It was doing far too much ice skating as a youngster, and then you and I went snowboarding, and I yeah. had a couple of spectacular crashes. Yeah, rather like have a spectacular crash of a donkey, as I said earlier. In fact, there's a theme running through my life. Anyway, how did there? we get from Duxford to Red Arrows to your knees? <laughs> <laughs> Only we can get there. <laughs> well, that's because maybe I have two of everything. Mm. Oh, did you? Isn't that smooth? Oh, you're so smooth. good at this. Yes, because we're going to play a bit of George Formby and his song. She's got two of everything. What ho? She's got two of everything. George Formby. I do love a bit of George. We did talk in the past about uh, me wanting to use this piano we've got that, that doesn't work properly. Yeah. To do a bit you, of um, honky tonk blues. Honky tonk blues. Yeah. And another instrument that I never quite mastered but wanted to learn was the ukulele. But. Uh, I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, dear listener, but I had an accident when I was very young, and as a result, my left hand doesn't... think Well, the fingers don't quite work properly. And as a result, I found out I couldn't get the chords for the uke. So that was so sad. I so wanted to. Hmm. Now, I was told to restring it to be a left-handed ukulele, because obviously my other hand works better. But I never got around to doing that. Well, no, you just thought restringing it, that sounds like hard work. Well, it sounds like it's going to be rather hard to learn how to do that just from a YouTube video, I'll be yeah, honest. Yeah. So apart from talking about my knees and donkeys kicking my feet away, mm-hmm. and we talked a little bit about the IWM Ducks and Flying Legends, we, we really should be thinking back of Norman Bennett. Okay. Because um, he's going to be next after a track. Um, but it's a Louis Armstrong track called The Fat Foot Flugie. Now, you may have heard of this song. It's one of our favourites, isn't well, it? It is a classic. In fact, if you ever go to any of the vintage festivals, this is the, the guaranteed floor filler, mm. but not by Louis Armstrong. So this is uh, quite, quite, a, quite a different experience, we hope, for you all. But we do like to give you a musical experience. Is this the one where everyone dances in line, or is that something different? No, it's something different. Um, all right. Can't think of what it's okay. called. Anyway, so not, not this one, but so it'd be interesting to see how Louis sings it. What ho! Hello, I'm Norman Burnett. Welcome to the Home Front Bus. I know this is going to sound a daft question, because it probably is what it says on the tin, but what is the Home Front Bus? The Home Front Bus is life on the home front inside a vintage double-decker bus. It's a converted double-decker bus, and inside we have a uh, recreation of a 1940s living room, a recreation of a 1940s shop, that's downstairs. Upstairs, we have a bombed out street with sound effects and light effects, and we have an air raid well, uh, shelter you can hide in. Now, I'm showing my age a bit because I do remember buses like this, but these aren't like modern buses, are they? Because the cab is a little bit more forward. So, w- what period is the bus from itself? 
the bus is one of the last of the old types of buses so it's 1966 but it does have the engine at the front and what we used to call a half cab so it's a bit cut out the front looks a bit like an old london bus but it isn't it's from kent and so how did you acquire a bus and then how did you acquire a bus and then say you know what i'm going to do i'm going to turn it into a 1940s house I didn't. Somebody else did that. Um, It was a project from a a group of history buffs and actors who took about six years to um, do the conversion of the bus in the West Country, in the Bath area. And having done it for six years, they tried working it for a year or so, and they just gave up. (laughs) To cut a very long story short, they ended up giving the bus um, back to myself and a small group of us, and uh, we've restored it, and uh, we usually use it by visiting schools it's a mobile museum that goes into schools mainly primary schools and we teach about life on the home front that was going to be my next question was how on earth do you transport this sort of this as so you do literally do drive it this you, you can see this tootling down your village lane any any day of the week you can get stuck behind it anywhere yeah it's flat out at 40 miles an hour um so if you get stuck behind us on a little road we do apologize we have got a splendid photograph on the back of the bus of a load of evacuees waving enthusiastically in an effort to cheer people up who uh, get a bit miserable stuck behind us what ho now you said you mainly do schools and we're here at an air show at the moment you can probably hear by the background noise so are you just geographically limited by how far the bus can go or will you take it to John O'Groats or Land's End? It's been to both John O'Groats and Land's End. This bus is the only double-decker bus to officially travel from John O'Groats to Land's End. But that was before it was converted to the home front bus, and yes, I did drive it. These days, it lives in Kent, and it's mainly limited by the economics of schools, because the further we travel, the more we have to charge them. So principally, it works in London and the home counties. I am so impressed because I haven't, I, I can, I haven't actually got a chance to go round yet. But I can see from the little bit of the window, little bit of the doorway, this. You, when you're inside, you're not going to know this is a bus. No, that's often the comment. We it, we don't know if we're in a bus, and people often think it's Doctor Who's TARDIS because it appears to be bigger on the inside than the outside. But it's just an illusion. The only way you'll know you're in a bus is to look at the ceiling because it's got a nice curve to it. Now, we're at a weekend-long event, so do you guys, when the public go, do you just shut the doors and go and living it and um, become Mrs Miniver? Yep, the team slept in the bus last night. I didn't personally, I was elsewhere, but four of the teams slept in the bus last night for the Imperial War Museum event. Well, we do that occasionally, only in the decent weather. <laughs> so, I mean, what's it like sleeping on a bus? Is it like baking hot in the summer and freezing cold in the winter, or is it really like just living in a, in a 1940s house? It's a little bit like that. We tend to sleep, I sl- tend to sleep in the air raid shelter if I sleep <laughs> in it. And um, between you, me and the listeners, um, we, uh, we cheat. We've got a nice little air conditioning unit in there that keeps the temperature right down. So it feels like it's underground. Fantastic. So how do people find out about it? Because I see there's a big website name on the side of it. And the trouble being radio, we can't really do this justice. So how can people, I assume you can see pictures online. You see pictures online. If you go to homefrontbus.com, that's our website. Um, we get a lot of hits. We're also on, do the usual, Facebook um, and Instagram. So you can see lots of photographs. It's part of a, a larger company called Alpha Bus Company, which runs um, old-fashioned buses, which are buses. So if you look on Facebook, it's Alpha and Homefront Bus. What ho? Phil Harris and the Dark Town Poker Club. A wonderful 78, including all the crinkles and all the crackles. You are listening to Harry and Edna on the wireless. It's, fair. it's uh, what, an hour long we get to give you a little look into the current UK vintage scene. And this week we thought we'd go and find out about the Homefront Bus. Now, if you want to hear about hear the show again, 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 you know you can. Obviously, listen to the radio is by far the best way, but you can listen to it again and again and again. Just go to harryandedna.co.uk and you'll find highlighted is the latest Harry and Edna. And then if you scroll down a bit down the website, you'll find an area where you can stream the entire back catalogue. And we've been doing this for about eight years and there's a lot in there. Alternatively, if you're more of a podcasty person, you can download the podcast. Now, the podcast doesn't contain any of the music, I'm afraid, because of, obviously, uh, copyright reasons. But if you want to, we're on the Spotify, we're on Spreaker, or you go to harrynedner.co.uk, and there's an option there where you can download the podcast. 
And if you want to get a hold of us, yes, oh, we do the we do the whole social media. We do we're on Instagram as Harry and Edna presents, and also Harry and Edna on the wireless on good old Facebook. So there is no excuse for not getting hold of us. Oh, bye, Jingo. What ho? Oh, Harry, that does remind me of Jeez and Worcester. The TV show. Yeah. With um, Stephen Hugh Fry Laurie. and Hugh Laurie. Probably oh. back in the 80s. Yeah, but that was the best show, I think, ever, ever. They all, they sung that song, didn't they, in, yeah. in, in the show? And they, they released a CD. That's how yes. old it was. It was yes. little, these, these are the days when you used to get these little discs and you could play music. And they and Hugh Lloyd's actually got a grand voice and he mm. sings this on the CD. The cast sing it, don't they, if I remember? Mm. It's, it's amazing. Um, I'm trying to think of their names. What, Hugh Laurie and... No, no, no. There was um, that chap mm. who then went on to another TV show about a hospital up in North. Mm. Um, the Royal. That, the Royal, and that was set in like the 1960s, so he'd left the 30s, yeah. where he was Toppy Glossop, yeah. and then he went on to need to be in the Royal. Yeah. And he ended up being in our service station with us, and we, I didn't know who he was. And you were going, that's Toppy Glossop. And I that's going, Toppy Glossop <laughs> and his wife, Kate, somebody or other. Uh, yeah, sorry, Kate, we... Uh, yeah, I met her wife. several times afterwards at, at the music theatre because um, she's a singer as well as an actress. Oh, right. Honestly, yeah. We are no, uh, we are no good at gosh, this celeb we meet, Well, that, we? I think that's why we're never starstruck because <laughs> we're like, you're so-and-so and then we're like, and who are you again? <laughs> <laughs> We've probably met, well, we have met some amazing people and uh, never been starstruck because we're very vague about who they are half the time. Yeah, I met a chap called Manfred Mann once. This is Mm. going back many years ago. This is going back to when I first used to radio present many, Mm -hmm. many years ago. Mm. And this chap was plonked in front of me and I had to ask who he was. Uh, I met Jerry from Jerry and the Pacemakers and he always reminded me of a pigeon because he had such a like big breast and then these tiny little sparrowy legs. And he just reminded and he was strutting around on the stage. He just reminded me of how a pigeon walks. Jerry, sorry, mate, if you're listening. Sorry, it just that was just the thing that stuck in my head. <laughs> See, so here we are. We're looking into the vintage scene, and we're looking yeah, into the future, the atomic in, age, yeah. into the sixties with with the Royal. It wasn't a hotel; it was a hospital, wasn't it? Yeah, hospital. Yeah. See, I don't watch telly. Um, this is how it starts. Royal around. hotels and Jerry and the pacemakers. And, I know Manfred Mann and Manfred Mann. Yeah, I didn't have a face idea. Think, who, who, who was the guy in Jews and Worcester who fell in love with? The girl who was going out with Bertie Finknottle. You know who I mean? No. He was the one who had the lingerie shop. But oh, he was yes, a bit of yes, a bully. Yes, uh, yes. Um, I can't um, remember his name. Why, no. do you, do, why have we met him as no, well? No, no, no. He was just, he sung on that song of the, the version of Jesus and Worcester. I'm trying to come back to the, the song we just played. Spode was a character Spode, he made. That's right. He played the character Spode, but I don't know who he was. I thought you were going to say Gus we met Finknottle. him. Gus Finknottle. No, no, no. He probably no. said he came round our house, and I, and I completely yeah, no him. idea who he was. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, anyway, so he sung on that song as well. He yeah. sung "Oh by Jove, I'd by Jove." So if you are famous, hmm. um, we're terribly, terribly <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Bob for coming. We, we, we don't know who you are. <laughs> we're never starstruck, I'm afraid. Um, we haven't got the faintest idea who you well, are. I'm once. sure you've done lots of really important <laughs> stuff. I know. I was once starstruck, but that was about it. Who was that? Was was that Tony, Tony Hadley? Hadley? I yeah, knew it'd be Tony yeah. Hadley. <gasps> he was just as gorgeous in real life. For those of you who don't know, he sang with a band called Spandau Ballet. Yeah. Actually, we should really play a record, but I will tell you the anecdote. He's famous for the song Gold. Boom. Yeah, and, and all the lighting companies, that of all the stages he's ever played at, obviously flash gold light when he sings that line, because that's what you do. But you didn't, did you? No, 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 my, no. my chaps you, didn't, no. You had, a, you had a word with a tech crew when you were working in music theatre, and what colour did you get them to do? Well, we was we were all talking about Black Adder, and instead of gold, he discovers finest green. Well, that, no, Percy, the, wasn't it? This is in Black Adder yeah, yeah, two, two, in the TV show, and he's trying to do alchemy where you make gold, and, it, and, and his it gold kept Percy. coming out green. Percy he came said, out I with have finest, finest green. green. <laughs> so we, 
We used that Blackadder scene, and whenever Tony Hadley sung Gold, the lights went green, just for our own pure amusement. <laughs> that, so that was a massive in-joke. It was a completely massive in-joke. So but, there's an entire auditorium trying to work out why has everything gone green when he yeah. says Gold. But Tony Hadley liked it, because it's literally a complete change from what everybody else does. Oh, you and Tony were hanging out, Tony. were you? Yeah. You were hanging out, were you? Yeah, well, I could talk. So now we've gone from the 60s to the 80s now, yeah. have we? Yeah, well, we can well, do a whole time I'm, shift. I'm, I'm going to bring you back. Because okay. this is Harry Ned on the wireless, and we do the classic vintage scene. We le- we do not leave our beloved thirties or forties, well, we do occasionally, but we try not to. And here's a bit of Inky Dinky Doo. What ho? Inky Dinky Doo. Now we're doing a bit of a variety theme going on there because these are acts that are, so you can you imagine these on your variety stage, really, couldn't you? Mm. And and the next track we have got coming up is by a chap called Max Wall, who was really variety. I mean, he could sing and he could do dance, and he was a comedian, did all sorts, and an actor. Wasn't he famous? As in, like, he, yes, he, he was. Yes, yes. No, I mean, he had got his heyday. Of him. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was probably his big period. I'm guessing was sixties and the seventies, really. But he did end his career on a soap opera called Crossroads. And I said, I bet you don't know Crossroads. Oh, and you said you Crossroads, do. yeah. Benny. Benny. With his little beanie Miss hat. Diane. Yeah, that was it. No, I, I, we have to be quick, so I'll play this and then we can chat about... Do we really remember Benny? What hope? 